Welcome to another pit fire day. <laughs> I'm always happy when I do pit fire. I really do love it. It's not just because it's fun to play with fire. I love the outcome. Today, I'm gonna show you how to pit fire bigger pots. Although these are not super big, they're still a little bit bigger than what most people are comfortable throwing in the pit. These one have been thrown in two sections, so a sectional throwing. And there's a risk when you throw pieces like that. If you're not connecting them perfectly, they may crack right there. And just dealing with a big pot in a pit can be challenging in itself. But now I got away with it more than a few times <laughs> and they do look, look amazing when you get them out. So today I'm gonna give my experience on how I do it. There's probably many other ways to do it, but how I fire bigger pots, let's just call them that, pit fire bigger pots and successfully get them out. So let's get on with it. four large or large-ish uh, pots that we're gonna fire today. They have all been thrown in sections. So the risk when firing pots like this is if you haven't smoothed it out, if you haven't glued those two sections well enough together, they may crack right where you put the two sections together. I think these are good. I hope so. I've done quite a lot of, of sectional throw, throw pots. Um, one thing that I've done this time, I've only done it a few times, um, but as you can see, this one is blue, magic. I made it blue by basically using a stain in my Terzigelade. Um, in this case, it's a turkey's bluish uh, kind of stain uh, that I added to my Terzigelade. When you do that, the, the, the shine is not as intense as it is when you have your pure Terzigelade, but I still think it's okay. And uh, I can always shine it up when I when I polish it after the fire. I also um, created a black stain that I used on the top here because I like to have black tops, especially when you have this uh, this sort of like a, a, a ribbon here or something. And and of course you can be lucky and get it naturally with the pit fire, but I just thought why not just add some black stains to the to this uh, part of the um, Terzigelade. The rest of it is just white. So I have two blue ones and a white and a white with black top. So let's go ahead with that. And as usual, I'm gonna use a mix of all my favorite um, coloring agents. Um, it's a little bit windy, so I hope it's not too noisy, but it's gonna work. One of them is this, um, these uh, uh, sponges. This one uh, is, in, is in copper. Uh, it's a sponge, but the funny thing is, if you unwrap them like this, you realize that it's actually a tube. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and this one is quite long. Um, so, it's always like, I mean, you could probably wear it if you wanted or something, you know. So, then when you get it like this, you can see you get this beautiful fish uh, uh, sort of pattern. It can extend quite a lot. So I'll see if I can I can somehow get it over this pot. Um, I'm not sure if I can extend it this much, but I hope so. <laughs> Maybe without breaking it. Yeah, surprisingly enough, I actually managed to get it all the way down here. I have some of this uh, copper wire. I'm just gonna use that to close it. Like this. And I'll do the same thing in the other end. So, 
Here you go. That looks interesting already. So I will I will pour um, a little bit of um, of uh, ferric uh, chloride um, on this. Splash a little bit uh, on it, and it will kind of stick uh, in all these uh, patterns. I will do that in a minute because I need to go to a different table and I need to get my gloves on. I'm gonna put this aside for now. The next one, um, this one actually is also gonna get some um, ferric chloride, so I'm gonna wait with that. But this one is not gonna get ferric chloride because this one I'm gonna use um, one of my favorites, the um, corn leaves. The corn leaves, like most leaves, by the way, and, um, and most organic materials, they, they leave a wonderful, um, wonderful color to, um, to the pot. I'm also gonna use some of these, um, it's actually old sheets that I put in a solution of, um, of the cobalt uh, sulfate. Um, and I let it soak there for a long time and then I took it out and I just dried it in the sun. And I'm gonna put them on. And what I, what I found is that the best way to glue them on is to use glue. So spray a little bit of glue on. And I glue it on like this. And I'm gonna take another one. It's gonna be like that. Another one of my all-time favorites is um, the steel wool. The steel wool is just uh, amazing. It, it, especially if you extend it like this, um, it creates some really nice um, threads, almost like a like a spider whip uh, type of thing. Um, and I really like how, how that uh, reacts um, in the pit fire. So, something like that. I'm gonna turn it around a little bit. I'm gonna add just a little bit more on the other side. I'm wondering if I can spray that on as well. Yeah, that's actually nice. It will stick if I do that, because otherwise it just flies around, so. I'm also gonna use um, some of my all-time favorites. Um, the, co co uh, the copper carbonate. Um, I'm just gonna add some here and some to the corn leaves. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt um, because the salt is gonna help with the fuming. And I'm gonna use that. And to tip it off, one of my other favorites, the banana peels. They also, it can be from orange, red, sometimes just dark, but they always give me some good colors, I think. So that's it. Now we're gonna wrap it up. And that is also <laughs> sort of a challenge with these bigger pots because even with a big roll of uh, tin foil like this, it doesn't completely cover. Um, but I mean, if you, if you take it step by step and uh, sort of <laughs> try and put it in, we wanna get it close to the pot um, or, the, or the combustibles. Um, then, yeah, we need, definitely need some more. <laughs> then you can kind of take it step by step and, uh, and make the cocoon. And as usual, I'm not gonna put it all close to the pot. I wanna create holes. I wanna create uh, little bubbles of air um, so that we get different um, textures um, around the pot. I think it needs that. 
I like that look. Um, so I'm gonna give it a little bit more. Some people ask me uh, why I use um, why I use tin foil because most often uh, the temperatures I get in the pit will dissolve uh, the, the, the tin foil completely. It dissolves around 700 degrees Celsius. And yeah, I mean, if I have a really good fire, then when I open up uh, the pit, all the tin foil is dissolved. But I think somehow it helps um, keep all the, the combustibles closer to the pot uh, for at least until 700 degrees or something. And then of course it's gonna spread out. But I have good results with this. You don't have to use tin foil. If you don't use tin foil, and especially if you use a lot of uh, sawdust or scrapings and stuff that creates a lot of uh, smoke, then they will be darker, which is also beautiful. Maybe we should make one of them. I think maybe this one we should make. Oh no, I think this one. I think this one we should make without uh, tin foil, just so you can see the difference. So now this one is made. I'm just gonna put it aside. So let's make this one without tin foil. It is a little more challenging <laughs> because we don't, we have nothing to hold on to it. But we can use uh, the spray. So um, I'm going to use the spray here, and I actually have the uh, uh, copper carbonate in in, in this, uh, which is uh, really nice because it's like a, a. I think it's made for spices, uh, maybe um, maybe. Uh, um, salt, sugar or something. It's a little bit windy today, so I'm probably gonna get it all over me, but it's okay. I should probably wear a mask. If um, some of you see me doing this, don't do it at home. <laughs> So, I'm also going to add some salt and then I'm going to try and wrap some of the, some of the leaves. So I'm going to put the leaves here, I'm not sure how, how that's going to work but I will try this um, and then I will try and take some of the copper wire that we have. Um, I'll try and see if I can I can make it um, pull on to the to the leaves. I'm not sure if it's gonna work but let's see. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. I'm gonna try and put some of this in here. And now Adding more here is actually going to help um, keep it all together. This one, definitely, I have to be a little more careful when we um, when we um, when I put it into the to the pit. Um, and I'm going to use a couple of the strings. Tie a knot on this. So this way I now have something where I can put my compostables under. This may look a little bit messy, but I'm thinking I'm gonna add a little bit more because we don't have it um, wrapped into the tin foil. This looks a bit crazy though, but I think it's gonna work out great. Um, I think I may have to put it down very carefully. So now we have these two ones left, and I definitely wanna use some um, uh, ferric chloride on these. 
So I'm gonna take my dirty table to do that. When you're dealing with the uh, ferric chloride or um, any of the sulfates, um, you, um, you should wear gloves. Um, especially with the, uh, with the uh, copper sulfate and cobalt sulfate, they're not good. Uh, the ferric chloride, um, it's not super itchy, but it's itchy enough that... Oh, this one broke. I think I'm going to take another one. Um, it's itchy enough that you don't want it on your fingers. Also, you don't want it on your clothes. I'm going to take the risk. And um, this is not my, my, my Sunday clothes, so I think I'll survive if I get a little splash on it. So, I'm ready. The fair chloride that I'm using is a 40% solution. I buy it like this and one liter is, I think it's 120 Danish kroner, what is that? 15, 20 dollars something. And this lasts a long time. You can also get 16% solutions and this is uh, diluted with water, so you can dilute it if you want to. It gives it a little lighter color. I like this uh, because I only need to give it uh, one go and, and I get great colors. But I have tried to dilute it. It worked okay too, but you can do whatever you want. So let's try with this funny one first. Now of course I have to be careful because I can't really uh, put it upside down because I put all this in the bottom. So I kind of just have to, um, to hold on to it like this. I'm just gonna do some splashes. Not all over the place, but... Something like that, I think will do. This one, I want to give a little bit more. I think this is going to be good. Some people give it two layers, some people give it inside two. I mean, that, that's really up to you. Play around with it. Um, I found that, that just giving splashes and then combining it with uh, combustibles and, um, and, uh, and oxides and stuff, I think gives really good results. I'm gonna put back what it was left and leave it until later. Ideally, you would let it completely dry before you uh, put it in tinfoil because it is um, corrosive and uh, there's a risk that um, it will it will corrode um, the tinfoil. But there's not so much on this one, so we'll go ahead anyway. I'm gonna use some of the some of the strings. Um, I have made some strings in, um, in salt, and I made some strings in, um, in uh, uh, what did I put in? Uh, cobalt sulfate, um, the salt in water, and they both work really great. They they do leave some nice marks. So I'm gonna add just a few of them. I'm gonna add some um, of the copper carbonate and some salt. And let's see if we have any more left. Yeah. I have a little bit of bananas left. I'm put this on here. And 
actually have, I forgot to use that before. <laughs> I have this um, cobalt the carbonate, which is dissolved in water. It, you have to shake it a lot. Um, it's actually a, a very good uh, colorant. I, uh, I'll not put it on this one, but I think I will put a little bit on the other one. Um, I used co cobalt sulfate before. It's a little more tricky. This gives a very um, strong blue color. So it's a good one. I think, actually, no. I think we're gonna leave it with this. You know, if it turns out that your pot, oh, now it becomes windy. <laughs> If it turns out that your pots um, are too boring, you can always fry them again. So, so I mean, take a risk. Um, there's really no risk. <laughs> or take a chance, I think it's called. <laughs> anyway, I think you get the point. So you see, the way that I make these pots are actually not any different than how I wrap up uh, all my other pots. Um, they're just bigger. But it's a little bit different when you come to stacking uh, the kiln. For this pot, I'm also going to use another colorant that I haven't used uh, so much in the past. This is a uh, cobalt carbonate. Uh, it has been it's dissolved in, uh, in water. I think. I think we gave it a hundred gram or something. It wasn't actually me who mixed it, but one of my good friends, Eve. And um, usually I use uh, cobalt sulfate, but that's very tricky to get the right blue color out of. The temperature is very sensitive. Then we tried with cobalt carbonate. It doesn't dissolve as well, so you have to shake it good um, every time you use it. But it turned out that it was easier to get that beautiful bluish uh, color that we like from cobalt. So I'm gonna try and, and add some to this mix um, of uh, the fire chloride. Right. So some I'm gonna add uh, to the areas where there's no um, fire chloride. Right. And some of course is gonna run over. So it's gonna be interesting to see how these two react to each other. I think that should be enough. Now we are ready to wrap up the last pot with the combination of the ferric chloride and the copper carbonate. I will be using um, oh, some uh, copper wire that very often it just turns um, black. Sometimes if you're lucky it can be greenish um, or maybe even red. Uh, but that requires a special atmosphere that you don't get that often. You can use many kinds of copper wire. Um, some people just take it from old electric wires and liberate it from that. Um, I think it's too much work. <laughs> so um, I found a place um, here locally in Denmark that sell these rolls. Um, there's, uh, I think, 400 meters or something in this. It's a kilo of uh, cobalt uh, or copper wire, and that lasts a long time. And it wasn't actually that expensive. Uh, I mean, copper, 
uh, cover cost uh, some money on metals too, but I think it was okay. I think it was okay. So at least I went ahead and then um, bought that. So I think that looks good. Now we have something where we can put our combustibles so they don't fly off. <laughs> and I will, let me just see, we'll put some carbonate here and some salt and a little bit of my steel. Sometimes I have good luck um, creating a sort of a dark, uh, almost black uh, inside by, by adding some, some newspapers in here. Sometimes not, but in any case it doesn't hurt, so I'm just going to put some in there. And here's the last ones of these. Um, I think we're good with this one. The last one of the big ones. Now comes the tricky part, because the way that you pack the kiln, in my experience, have a huge impact on whether or not these larger pots are going to survive. So let's take a look at that. Theoretically, you could of course place your pots like this, upside, and uh, put the fire around it. And I know potters that do this. And, and this way I could, in this, um, this kiln, I could make them this high, this tall, so maybe 50, 60 centimeters tall. These ones are about, I think, 40 or something. In my experience, that's dangerous. Because the problem is, the way that I fire at least, I fire from the top and down. So I light the fire up here and it will be really hot and then it works its way down. And if you put them this way, this top is going to get really warm before the bottom. And then you're going to have a big difference between top and bottom and that's when it will crack. So what I found is that by putting it um, sideways instead, there's a much lower risk that the pot is not going to get warmed up evenly. So this of course limits me because this um, particular um, uh, drum that I'm using is about 55 centimeters and I like to have a little bit of space on each side um, to get some fire going and so there's a limit to um, how wide I can, how big I can make the pot. I'm thinking about creating a different kind of pit where I can have larger pots but for now this is what I have. So um, I will start out by adding some wood at the bottom and maybe some scrapings and then I will add two pots and then I will add more wood and then I will add the other two pots the other um, in the other angle. I don't I, I want to make sure that when I stack them that the risk of um, of falling down on each other in a bad way is limited as much as I can. <laughs> so um, I'll try and take that into consideration when, when, when I stack them. That, that's the best I can, I can say. So I will come back in a second and show you how the layers are going to build up. This is the first layer. I put some wood at the bottom, then I put some uh, shavings, um, things like this. Um, and then I put, actually, I put some um, cleaning from my chicken house. <laughs> there's some hay and there's some chicken shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't know a better word for it, but all kinds of maneuvers are really good. Uh, I know in the US they use a lot of uh, cow maneuvers. Uh, I don't have any cows, <laughs> I have chickens. But all that, um, all the combustibles, all the stuff they eat that comes out, they create great colors. So I use some of that. Uh, it does create a little bit more smoke, but I'm gonna fire really late not to disturb the neighbors too much. So I think we survive it this time. Now I'm gonna add some more wood and then enough to, to sort of support the next layer. This is the wood and it kind of just uh, 
supports and and protects, um, so it protects uh, the the pots below and it supports the next layer. But keep in mind that um, they're going to fall down because all this wood is going to burn away and then they're going to fall down. So you have to to think about how you're layering uh, things um, so that they won't hurt each other when they when they collapse. Now we covered the first layer completely um, with the wood and the shavings and again something from my chicken house. <laughs> so now you can see it here <laughs> in between all the wood. Now the second layer um, of pots and I put them on the other uh, angle. So first this way and then this way. I found that it's a little more secure when they when they fall together so they don't roll around uh, too much. I don't know if that's true but it worked for me so maybe it will work for you too. As I mentioned I do have a few more uh, smaller pots that I'm going to try and add to the top here but uh, that's not really part of this um, video. Besides that it's actually getting dark so it will be difficult for me to film anymore um, at least in a high quality. And uh, so therefore I'm just gonna pack these um, on my own and I will light the, the, the kiln later. Um, I will not do it before it's completely dark. The reason for this is I do have some neighbors over there and uh, they have balconies and they like to sit out in the summer. And of course they don't like the smoke from my pit fire too much. So I'm trying to be nice to them and I will light it very late when I'm sure that they went to bed or at least they're not on their balconies anymore. So um, you probably already seen me light the kiln and uh, fire it and all that. If you haven't, uh, I have tons of good videos here where I go in much more details about how I do that. So I'm not going to be focusing so much on, um, on that in this video. Instead, I'm going to look forward to see you tomorrow and unload the kiln and see how it turned out with these big pots. Now it's ready to fire and um, it is getting darker. But um, I will wait a couple of hours before I light it. So I will go inside and uh, enjoy myself until it's ready to light it. Now it is dark <laughs> and it's time to light the fire. I'm not sure how much you can see, but uh, I will let the video roll anyway and uh, maybe show you a few clips of the beautiful fires. <laughs> and tomorrow I'm gonna unload. That's the interesting part. Good night's sleep and my first cup of coffee and I'm super excited to see what comes out of the kiln today because even though I've done so many fires there's still this degree of uncertainty you never know for sure did some of it crack did the colors turn out the way you wanted is there good or bad surprises 
I think that's part of what I love about Pitfire, that you can't be 100% sure. And even though I think I control things a little more in reality, there's just all these, you know, variables that, well, you never know. So I'm excited and let's go and see what's in the kiln. The first thing is, of course, to see if anything um, cracked. But It looks good. And as I told you, I was um, putting in a couple of additional pieces, a small um, bowl and two small vases. And even though this one <laughs> has fallen quite a lot, it does look like it survived. And um, this little one looks interesting too. And this is the one where we didn't wrap it up. And um, there's some nice colors and um, that would be interesting to see and this is wrapped up and then we have the two others down here and it looks like you see it didn't fall too long because I put these um, opposite of the first two so they didn't fall if I had put them like this then they would have fallen in between and um, there would have been a higher risk of um, of cracking so this actually looks really good so let's take them out and see what it's like this is a small piece um, and as expected it's rather dark because I didn't um, I didn't wrap it up um, and um, but if you take a look I, I like these dark uh, variations and there's some red here and uh, yeah I think when I, when I brush this up it will be nice small part. As always when you take out the pieces be very careful because it's still a little bit uh, wacky and it could fall. This one is interesting. This is um, a red um, uh, clay, a high iron, um, high grog uh, clay, and I burnished it, but I didn't. Um, I didn't use any tersigilana, so it had a dark surface, and I didn't wrap it off, so it's got a lot of the the carbon, a lot of the the darkness and I think it turned out really nice in a way so that one too that was one of the small ones so this is um, one of the bowls I did have some problems in the past with bowls that they cracked more often than uh, than other types of, um, of pots but this one seems to have survived it sounds good I'll just empty um, this, uh, the wire and the tin foil, which is of course completely dissolved. Yeah, it survived. I love that sound. The sound of perfection. <laughs> the, the coloring on the outside is, uh, is really beautiful. I think when I get, uh, get this one uh, burnished, it'll be great. On the inside, it's very light on purpose because I want to use um, this for, for food and um, now you're thinking you can't use pit fire for food but yes you can because I have this new um, liquid quartz a food safe sealant I'll make it completely waterproof and it's approved for food at least in Australia and Europe so I don't know about where you are but I think this will be beautiful um, I'm happy Just love that sound. So now we have to look at what we really came for. The big pots. This is the first one and at the first look it actually looks really nice but there is a small crack and it's not where the two parts were, were put together because that's much higher so there must have been some sort of weakness um, you can hear the sound is bad and uh, this is of course not good it will still you know function it's not a piece that I would ever sell um, but I think it looks good so it's just one of those things where any kind of weakness in your in your pot will shine through but I think the coloring is nice and actually surprisingly not dark <laughs> on one side um, 
considering that it wasn't wrapped. So let's take a look at the next one. This is the one with the fishnet <laughs> or the copper wire, copper um, copper net. Um, so I'm just going to take it off uh, because it's so dusty um, and uh, and see what it um, what it looks like. Yeah, this one looks really interesting and. I don't know if you can hear it, but this is the sound we like. There's no cracks in this one. And um, as usual when using this net, it doesn't come out the same way all over the pot, which I actually like, you know. There's some of it up here, there's some of it down here, and then there's areas where the colors and the carbon have just um, settled in different ways. We have some white areas. And this, I think, turned out really, really nice. I'm very, very happy with this one. So this one is uh, one of the blue vases um, where I applied the blue terra And first look, looks good. Um, so let's uh, remove uh, the tin foil. And this looks really interesting. The blue, of course, is very dominant, um, but we have some some interesting colors, uh, some reds, um, some nice yellowish here. That could be uh, some of the combustibles, uh, banana peel or the the, the corn um, leaves. Um, I think this is good. And once again, let's. It have that sound. Can you hear? It? That's what we like. So um, no cracks in this one either. And now for the last one. This one also looks nice. It's got a better combination, I think, of uh, darkness and, um, and colors. It's got a little more reddish on this one, some nice dark areas, and I think this one looks really good. Um, and the sound I like, the sound of no cracks. So three out of four of the big pots, it's actually not too bad. And even the one with the small crack, I would still use it personally because it is beautiful in its own way. So let's uh, liberate it from this. I think this also came out really interesting. Um, of course, right now, uh, all the colors are still dull. <laughs> uh, they don't shine through the way they will in a few moments when we uh, get it cleaned up and, um, and then eventually polished. But I think this one is uh, very beautiful too. I think, all in all, it was a successful fire. There was one cracking, um, one crack pot. Um, it's not bad. And I think once I polish it, and, and you won't, you won't even see it. But of course, still, it's it's a fail. Um, it was a beautiful fail, though. <laughs> and the other three, they're just perfect in my mind. And on top of that, we got a few. Um, Little ones that also turned out, oh, I love that sound, uh, great. So now it's time to clean them up and um, I will show you how they turn out in the end. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little session and um, if you do, if you did, <laughs> uh, please go and watch some of my other videos. I have a lot of videos about pit fire and some wheel throwing and glazing and stuff. If you like it, um, please subscribe, write a comment if you have any questions. If you like it or hate it, give it a thumbs up, thumbs down if you hate it. <laughs> and uh, please come back again soon. Have a great day. As I mentioned uh, when I unloaded the kiln, one of the large pots actually had a crack. And when I was working at Kleenernik, it broke completely apart. So. Usually I would just have thrown out a pot like that, but then I decided why not try the Japanese Kensuki technique. You've probably heard about it. It's a technique where you not only glue the pots together, but you kind of highlight the fact that you did it with gold. You can use real gold, or as in my case, some fake gold that looks okay. I made a video about how I did it that's gonna come up soon, but here I included some photos of that pot as well. So um, here they are, the finished four large pots.